is absolutely a key foundation of human civilization and a lot of preppers out there are making art and it's beautiful art and they're sharing it with us and it's great but overall the role of art as an actual strategy to help survive a disaster or an SHTF event on a small or a massive scale is pretty much being overlooked so today I'm going to look at a few channels and show you some pictures and show you some music and even give you some poems just to get you thinking about the ideas that you might want to incorporate into your survival strategy to incorporate art foundationally into your life maybe now but definitely in SHTF Ashes. Ashes. Most of us know that little tune, that tune's been around for about 400 years now, it's a child response to the appallingness of black death and plague and massive deaths and it was so strong that it actually gave the children a method of dealing with the incomprehensible and that's what the role of art is, is to give us a place in the universe when our place in the universe doesn't appear to be very strong. You are a high-ranking military service member deployed to Afghanistan. You are responsible for the lives of hundreds of men and women, and your base is under attack. Incoming mortar rounds are exploding all around you. Struggling to see through the dust and the smoke, you do your best to assist the wounded and then crawl to a nearby bunker. The Invisible Wounds of War, commonly known as post-traumatic stress disorder, and traumatic brain injury. So this video is not going to be about PTSD. It's about the role of art in trauma. And I do think we need to take this on board. Due to advances in technology and neuroimaging, we now know there's an actual shutdown in the brocas or the speech-language area of the brain after an individual experiences trauma. I do encourage you to watch that TED talk. What she found was with soldiers specifically who are having psychological difficulties, post-fighting in modern wars, that actually making and creating and hand-carving paper mache and wood masks and painting them to reflect their inner thoughts and feelings was a very strong catharsis for them. It actually really, really helped. And there is a bunch of pictures at the end of this along with a bonus song. Finally, these invisible wounds don't just have a name. They have a face. Now, one of a very small channel that I actually found recently from another fairly small channel uh, dark steel. Painting Armstrong, um, I think it's got less than 10 subs at this point, but I would encourage it. What she's doing is she's using her channel to actually put up digital paintings um, and they're very calming and they're very beautiful to watch the actual art be created and that's actually something we should be taking on board in the now. It helps us center ourselves by watching and appreciating art form. But what she's done is she's done two poems, I believe, so far. This is the shorter one where she talks about her recent battles with depression. The channel is not a negative channel. She's got a happy relationship and everything's going great for her. But like most people, she has severe depression at times. She also did quite a long poem about physical and mental abuse she'd experienced in the past. And this is a form of actually documenting it and dealing with it to process it in ways that are subconscious because often when we try to consciously deal with our demons and our issues it doesn't really work that well. In SHTF it's no time to be bottling up emotions and bottling up pain when you've got work to do. At some point it'll bring you down. I gave in to the demons that controlled every fear, making me believe it, always whispering in my ear. The truth is that I'm tired and withered and alone, like a flower slowly crumbling on an empty sheet of stone. I break away into pieces, I rip away every thorn, but the demons only fix me so they can keep this going. I try to fight the anger, I tried to calm the storm, but the raging is still inside me even though I'm worn. The truth is I can win this, again I'll face these demons, just like I have before, but if I'm really honest, they always come back for more. It's a never-ending battle that I face every day. These demons are so annoying, but they've become a part of me. But I will grow and spread my roots like the willow holds her ground. 
Every time I break my heart, I'll remember where I was found. I've been at the bottom, but I'm rising once again. I'll never be okay with this, but I know my demons like a best friend. And I always like to hear what the artist says about their work, and this is art. And I'll listen to the work. You've read and heard the poem. Listen to why the poem exists. I wrote this poem to reflect what depression and anxiety has been like for me. This poem is the reflection of my battle with depression, especially recently since I have had a stroke and a miscarriage and things just kind of started to pile up for a while, but I'm getting better and my depression is slowly fading away. And you know what? Everything is going to be okay. As part of our prepping supplies, we actually have quite a few uh, crayons and paper and oil paints. Small, cheapish kits, but a good quality kits, and we've stored them up. Reason being, by expressing yourself in art, you can actually help control and also deal with horrific things. Prepping uh, it deals with horrific things, and to think we're immune to it is a bad mistake. Now, one of the other things that I would suggest strongly is journaling. Uh, one of the things we always tell visitors in the ICU is to actually start a diary, a day-by-day -day diary, uh, describing what they're going through. And this is a really useful thing. I've only ever done it once in my life. I did it when I was having uh, severe breakup problems um, with Kitty, which resolved. And it helped me an awful lot. And I would suggest that notebooks and pens and pencils are kept for the group supplies for your bug out group, not just for the mundane documentation of first frosts and what you plant and how much food you have left, but also for people to actually be given a journal and to be encouraged to write in the journal and then maybe once a month to share aspects of their journal uh, that they feel comfortable sharing. Journaling is a very strong method of helping people deal with stress. And let's face it, SHTF will be very, very stressful and possibly for an awful long time. So various people out there are doing various things already for art. I think it's great to watch art. I think it's good. Now, one of the things that I'm going to play now, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of photographs that I've took that are related to this topic, but I'm going to play a song by Wally Jericho, uh, my brother-in-law, who's actually going to, um, who is an artist and musician in the now. He also makes and creates art as well. And that's one of the things I'm looking forward to in retirement, is getting more in touch with my artist self because that's a side of me I've never really tried to develop and I think it's important. Being able to make music without electronics, being able to paint, being able to create sculptures from natural form materials, all of those things we have the capacity to do and it isn't just a luxury item. It's absolutely essential that your bug out group and yourself are able to adjust to a, what might be a radically changed world and an emotionally devastating world in terms of what you've lost. So give it a thought. What do you guys think? Do you think art does have a major place in preparations for SHDF? Or do you think it's just a luxury item and you don't need to really think about it? I'm not talking about art for children. I'm talking about art for adults here. Um, I do think it's important that children actually experience the arts as well. But I think we all do. One of the things we'll be doing is we'll be once a month or once every couple of weeks, we'll be doing an artist night um, at the Shire once we move in there where we actually make music and read poems and read bits of books to people and all that sort of stuff and then talk about it and then share the emotional reaction. Anyway, that's all from me. Remember in SHTF, tomorrow will always be worse than today unless you're prepared. Doodles. <laughs>
few questions about my art. I'm not an artist. I'm not even really a filmographer. So this is from Tentree.ca and it's made from recycled wood fibres and ethically treated. And I was asked if this is actually a Constellations. Northern Hemisphere. Well, I don't know. I think it is. Let me know. And yes, uh, it does glow in the dark. This is one of theirs as well. This is actually the Aurora. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into this.